Good morning, church. I hope you all are doing wonderful today. It is a beautiful day outside. Who got rain this weekend? Woo! Yeah. We can can begin our worship time together praising God, right? That is a wonderful, wonderful gift that God has given to us. I'm Pastor Misty Howick, and it's just a pleasure to be here with you all today. I want to welcome you to New Song. Welcome to a place where you are loved and accepted. Welcome to a place where your hurts are healed and your lives are made whole. Welcome to a place where God meets you with grace and grants you peace. It's good to start seeing some of our winter residents coming back, so I hope you all will be uh, super friendly to everyone as people return back. It's It's a fun day when we see our friends who have been out all over the country and all over the world coming back to join us. We have a couple of announcements for you this morning. So uh, the first one is that after the scripture is read, hi. after the scripture is read today, we are going to have a new uh, liturgy. And we're doing that because we are now a new congregation together. As of um, earlier this year, March and April, we have Spirit Song Church together with New Song Church. And so you all are used to saying or hearing the word of God for the people of God and responding Thanks be to God. But today, you're going to hear this. After the scripture, you're going to hear, May God add God's blessings to the reading, understanding, and doing of God's word, to which we are all going to say, Amen. Okay, And this is to integrate some of our traditions um, back into our big congregation that we are now, two congregations put together. Um, so you might have noticed that Pastor Stephanie uh, was playing this morning. We said goodbye to Hongzhou, and she is on her way to Mississippi. Actually, she's reached Mississippi, and we are so thankful for her and her time with us. So Pastor Stephanie will be playing with us. We also have Pam Lau over here who's going to be joining us today in the musical realm. So thank you both. And uh, when it comes time to prayers, we're going to be asking you all to pray as we go through the interview and discernment process. Um, for a new accompanist, uh, which you might hear about, I don't know, if you come to choir concert this win or the choir rehearsal this Wednesday, uh, you might start seeing some of our applicants. So uh, that's more motivation if you're inclined to singing to come and join us this Wednesday at six o'clock for our first uh, choir practice. It's going to be five o'clock, correct? Six o'clock for choir, seven o'clock for praise team. Okay. There you go. Um, and I have a cold today, so I, that's why if you see me masked up, it's not COVID. I took a COVID test, so we're negative on that front, but I don't like spreading my germs. And so Michelle has offered to help us with um, communion. She's not taking over anything, friends, okay? Um, we are so grateful for her presence here um, as a licensed uh, a lay minister, and so we are going to uh, invite her to help us with communion today. Okay. And then our last announcement this morning is that we have something starting up again. We love starting things up again. Forever Friends is starting up again this Friday, and they're going to meet for a meal. You bring your own cutlery. And if you don't know what Forever Friends is, well, guess what? You indeed are a Forever Friend. Forever Friends is a fellowship group that meets to have dinner uh, about once a month. And we're starting it up this Friday, and it is anyone who wants to come and have dinner together. Isn't that fantastic? Um, So, yeah, it's you. Um, So there's many people who are like, oh, well, I don't know if I fit in that category. Yes, indeed, you do. You are in that category. So um, come and join us for dinner on Friday evening. Uh, What time is that, Janet? It's Friday. What did I say? 5.30 on Friday. You all are getting me set straight. Thank you. It's here, right here. Thank you. Thank you, right here. All right, and with all of that in mind, let us do what we came here to do, 
which is to worship God together. Please stand as we join in our call to worship. <clears throat> God, you have called us together as individuals to create us into a body, a community. In our praise of you, O oh God, we recognize all persons need the ministry of togetherness in their struggles for human fulfillment and spiritual and emotional care. In our praise of you, O God, we affirm that God's grace is available to all. And we will seek to live together in Christian community, welcoming, forgiving, and loving one another as Christ has loved and accepted us. Amen. Today we have a, an affirmation of faith that will lead us in our time of invocation. I invite you to, my fault, I invite you to join along with our modern affirmation of faith as our invocation today. So I say, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. We believe in God the Father, infinite in wisdom, power, and love whose mercy is over all his works, and whose will is ever directed to his children's good. We believe in Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of Man, the gift of the Father's unfailing grace, the ground of our hope, and the promise of our deliverance from sin and death. We believe in the Holy Spirit as the divine presence in our lives, whereby we are kept in perpetual remembrance of the truth of Christ and find strength and help in time of need. We believe that this faith should manifest itself in the service of love as set forth in our example of our blessed Lord to the end that the kingdom of God may come upon the earth. Amen. And now let's join together for our opening hymn, Christ for the World We Sing. It's number 568, and we'll be singing the first three verses. 568. the children to come forward. Pam, I really like that organ. Woo, that sounds great. It's nice. It fills the space up really well. Good 
Good morning, friends. So we are in the tradition of sitting down, but I'm actually going to have you get up here in just a second. I know, right? Um, so in just a second, I'm going to ask you to stand in one spot or the other right here in front on the floor, okay? And you're going to stand in the area that feels most accurate, most truthful to you, it, whatever you fit in, okay? So if you are 10 years old or older, stand here. And if you're younger than 10, come stand here. All right. You are, well, you, it's tomorrow, isn't it? All right, so they're over here. Okay, all right. All right, so these ones are over here. Okay, all right. So um, who's better? Us. Oh, why? Um, you're cuter. We're better. You're cuter. <laughs> <laughs> you're older and smarter. To that. <laughs> okay, let's get on to another one. All right, if you like cake more than ice cream, stand here. If you like ice cream more than cake, stand over here. Which one do you like best? <laughs> you know what? I'm over here too. <laughs> ice cream. Are you in the middle? Ice cream and cake both good? Ice All right. Ice cream, lasts, ice cream doesn't last as long. Ice cream doesn't last as long. But it tastes more yummy. Okay. Um, what about um, those people who like to play? Those people who either don't like to play sports or like to watch sports. So are you more of a, a you don't like watching sports. Okay. So either you like to watch sports, or you don't like sports at all, or you like to play sports. I like some sports, but not most of them. Yeah. So this is more playing. This is more spectator. Are you in the middle? All right. So who's better? Me. <laughs> and then we're more active. Our muscles are more active. I mean, just because yeah. you don't play sports doesn't mean you're not strong. That's true. Right? Just because working out isn't a sport, is it? No, no, not, not necessarily, right? Okay, you all can sit down. Thank you for doing this exercise with me. Um, I asked you a tough question after some of those, which was, um, who better? And you all were really good at um, playing along. Uh, some of you were like, what? Like, no, how can you ask that question? Others of you embraced the competitive uh, nature of things and said, oh, we are. Um, but we find that we do this all the time. We judge who is better based on kind of silly things, right? Um, whether you like ice cream or cake better, whether you are a sports person or not a sports person, whether you get good grades or not good grades, whether you are older or younger, right? All of those things, you're always competing and really over silly things, wouldn't you say? Yeah? Even the twins, are you guys... It's silly things we compete over most of the time. No? No? They're serious. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> right? You all compete all the time, right? Yeah. We have family members who judge us on little things, right? We were just talking about and, and judge whether we're better or not based on their conceptions of what they think is, is going on, right? So actually, we learn a Bible passage, and we're going to talk about it today, um, that Paul, who ends up being a disciple of Jesus after Jesus' death, he, he's going out and he's teaching all of these people um, and, and creating all of these churches about, he's create, teaching them about God and about Jesus. And at one point he tells this group of people that live in Galatia, he says, there's neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither male or female. None of these exist in Christ. Do you think that means there weren't any girls or boys? Those things don't matter. It's that those things don't matter. The ideas that came along with boys and girls or Jews and Greek or some of the other things that they talked about, it's like everyone's valuable, right? Everyone matters. Those things that our society says are better than the other, actually, in Christ's eyes, we are all valuable. So we're going to be learning that lesson today and trying to help us understand how even all of us in here, we're all guilty of, of playing that are we better game and uh, how God is always telling us 
that we are all valuable to God. Okay? All right, shall we pray? God, we thank you so much that you have um, begun teaching us what it means to be valued and loved just because we are yours, not because of our parents, not because of where we were born, not because of how old we are, not because of any of these other things, but because we are yours, O oh God, and you love and you treasure us. God, help us to understand that in our daily life and help us all learn the deeper meaning of how we can treat one another when we value them. Amen. Amen. All right, so today is Communion Sunday, so I invite you to go back to your seats um, and enjoy the service together. Thank you for coming up. to invite our ushers to prepare us for a time of offering as we remember all of those good things that have happened to us this last week and we want to give back to God. Uh, let us ask God if this is the way that God wants us to give back. Let's prepare our hearts for this time of giving. Let us break bread together on our knees. Let us break bread together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, Oh, Lord, have mercy on me. Let us drink wine together on our knees. Let us break, drink wine together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, oh Lord, have mercy on me. Let us praise God together on our knees. Let us praise God together on our knees. When we fall on our knees with our face to the rising sun, oh Lord, have mercy on me. Amen. Let us together and for that we are grateful and that is a gift in itself that we can gather together to break bread to drink wine to praise your name and now God we ask that you bless these gifts of offering and tithes that they may go towards building your community here build it in surprise build it in Arizona build it all over the world and may we be a part of what you are doing 
We pray all of this in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. Our reading today is from Galatians chapter 3, verses 26 to 29. For in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. As many of you were baptized into Christ, have clothed yourself with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female, for all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you believe, if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offsprings, his heirs according to the promise. May God add God's blessing to the reading, understanding, and doing of God's word. Amen. Come share the Lord. I'd like to pray, and before I do, I want to lift up a couple of things that are going on um, around us. So we pray for Hung Shu, right, who is our pianist, who we just said goodbye to as she goes to Mississippi. Um, there have been deaths in our church family community, and we want to just lift up the people who are grieving, okay? We're just lifting up people who are grieving. We're lifting up people who have um, found out about new medical ailments, new prognoses, um, new emergencies. There's some of those in our congregation as well, and we just lift up um, those friends and family members as well. We lift up all the trouble, all the trouble, all over the world. And so, God, I ask that you 
would be present with us. And, and God, we know that you're present with us, but God, may we feel your presence this morning as we hear the message that you have for us. And as part of our time together, oh God, we're going to lift up prayers of our hearts. We're going to lift up our friends and our family members and our church community. We're going to lift up all the troubles that people are in. And God, some of us are very happy in our, our little bubbles, and maybe we think we're not experiencing any trouble, but God, we're there to support those people in our lives who can't say that, who can't say that they're happy, who can't say that they're not troubled. So God, be with us today, and may the words of my mouth and may the thoughts and actions of all of us be acceptable to you on this day, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So I have a confession. Confession time. I love it when pastors confess because um, a lot of times people think that pastors don't have a lot to confess about, um, right? Because we're so perfect. Yay. Um, no, we're some of the most liable to make mistakes, I think. Um, so we're doing a little bit of a switcheroo this week. So uh, the title of the message is The Nurturing Community. And those of you who um, are following along with the social principles might have read about the nurturing community, you might be ready for our classes that we're doing um, this following week on the nurturing community. We are going to be doing the social community, okay? So you can go after this message today, after Sunday, you can go check up on the social community and it's more focused really on, on what that has to do. So not a big deal for most of you who are not following along with the social principles, but for me, uh, I, I am sorry, that's my fault for saying that um, we are doing it differently. Um, as you all kind of saw what's happening in children's time, my children are having their 10th birthday um, this weekend. It's very exciting. Um, they're moving out of the single digits and into double digits. Woo! Very exciting, right? Um, <laughs> it's the only time, you know, we get to really <laughs> do that. It's 9 to 10. Um, their birthday is actually on Monday, but we celebrated it yesterday, so there was a bit of confusion on how old they actually were. Well, as part of the celebrations, um, we recognized uh, that things weren't necessarily going very well in our preparations for the birthday. I, I share this with you because it's a fun thing of talking about uh, how life is sometimes. Um, so we, um, we started out by building a pinata. I love arts and crafts. If you don't know me very well, I love craftiness. Like I love, I actually love painting. My husband and I will go to painting nights, you know, that the community sponsors and we'll um, have a snack and we'll paint. I love painting with watercolors on my own. I'm not like, I'm not good at it, but I love doing it. I, um, and so the idea of making my own paper mache uh, pinata was so exciting to me. And uh, our theme was, uh, Zelda. Okay, so for those of you who know the video game of Zelda, it's fun. There's a little warrior knight who slays, you know, monsters and tries to fight on the behalf of good. And um, one of the monsters is a little robot, an ancient rock robot. And so we were going to make it into that. So we had this blessing of wind and rain earlier this week. And I had forgotten that I had put my paper mache, what I had built for two days, uh, a little robot outside to dry because it was a wonderfully hot, you know, day and week. And I thought, perfect. And so I woke up the next morning and I went to go check on it. And uh, Jeff asked me, he's like, how is it? Because I remembered in the morning, right? Oh, and I'm like, mm -mm, nope, it's a pile of mush. <laughs> it's a pile of mush. Um, it did not work out. It, yeah, it, so right. So and then um, so we, we figured that one out. We ended up making do. We bought a pre-made birthday cake um, a pinata. We turned it in because we're creative people like that. We turned it in to the robot that it needed to look like and it worked out fine. And then we made the cake. And uh, I do not claim to be a cake artist by any means. I watched a lot of baking shows. I have. Um, that does not make you a good baker or a good cake decorator by any means. And uh, with just a little bit, oh, yeah. <laughs> yep, um, that's it. Um, so, so we had this fun thing. You know, I didn't have much of a plan in mind. I was like, we're gonna have a. It's 
it was really exciting. We did a red velvet cake and a white cake and we swirled it together and it baked up nice, good. We're gonna do a cookies and cream icing. We're gonna you know, blend Oreos and put it together with the icing and it's gonna be just sugar spectacular. And um, yeah, you, you saw it, you saw it. Okay, um, we added the eyeballs later. We're like, it's a monster. <laughs> Um, that's not how it went, you know, that's not the only thing that kind of changed our plans. We were going to do a pool party, right? Yeah. Is this what you're going to share? Okay, well, hang on a second. Let me tell about the pool party. We're going to do a pool party. We're inviting everybody. The invitation said, we're bring your pool stuff. We get a message from our pool uh, people, our community pool, because it's a community pool. It's not our own pool. Algae bloom from all the heat and the dust and all that. Well, that goes. Uh, thankfully, we had some water balloons, and you know, we turned it into a similar thing. What were you all going to share about? Yeah. Um, I was just going to share something funny that might have happened. We had like an eyeball wall. We had an eyeball wall. We did. That is very interesting. What if someone had shot the cake? That would have been another thing to go wrong. I mean, <laughs> who knows? But why I'm telling you all of this is that. It's okay for us to claim to be good at some things and not good at some things. It's okay for us to say, me in particular, I am not the best cake decorator or planner. I'm not. There are many people who are better at that than I am. Um, I say that because we're getting into this conversation about values and how we value people and sometimes we say, uh, we judge about who is better than the other person. But I'm going to tell you, there are far better football players out there than I. Okay? There are far better soccer players than I. There are far more devoted soccer fans than I. I mean, we could go off, right? We could just say all the things that there's another person that's better than uh, me or you at that thing. And so when we look at values today, when we start to break down the scripture, when we look at our social, our social principles, you know, we're going to be talking about values. And I'm going to tell you right now, it's not about like these qualities that someone can actually be better than you at. Like we, we can just recognize that in each other and we value one another in spite or despite of those things, right? Do you all still love me even though I'm a terrible cake decorator? If anyone said no, you Go right out the door right now. <laughs> Children, no. But I mean, here, if you want some more examples, I have actually some, some more examples of some cakes that didn't go you know, particularly well. And we can say, you know, one person is clearly better at cake decorating than the other, OK? All right? So we've got Olaf. Is that Olaf? I'm not sure. Oh, Pikachu. <laughs> I had a rough night. Um, is it a pony or is it a pig? I'm not sure. Good try. A for effort. Oh, that, that blows my mind. Did they use teeth? Do you see that bottom one? Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. What? And that, that looks actually a lot like our cake last night. You know, if we had done the Rubik's cube, it probably would have turned into just that pile of, of cake mess. It tasted good though, right? It tasted good. And that's, that's what matters. <laughs> it kind of looks like it. All right, let's go back to, we're going to distract ourselves if we keep looking at those things. And now all of you have plans to go try and make one of these, right? No? <laughs> yeah, to make the monkey. So Maybe. So to remind ourselves, um, before we get into the Bible passage, we're looking at the United Methodist Social Principles. These are statements that the United Methodist Church has made has edited over time, they're living documents, we're always voting on how we wanna best say or best represent our, our ideas better. Um, but the one about society says this, the rights and privileges a society bestows upon or withholds from those who comprise it indicate the relative esteem in which that society holds particular persons or groups of persons. It's saying we value people we affirm, this is our statement, we affirm all persons as equally valuable in the sight of God. 
We therefore work toward societies in which each person's value is recognized, maintained, and strengthened. We support the basic rights of all people to equal access to housing, education, communication, employment, medical care, legal redress for grievances, and physical protection. We deplore acts of hate or violence against groups of people based on race, color, national origin, ethnicity, age, gender, disability, status, economic condition, sexual orientation, gender identity, or religious affiliation. Our respect for the inherent dignity of all people leads us to call for the recognition, protection, and implementation of the principles of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights so that communities and individuals may claim and enjoy their universal, indivisible, and inalienable rights. Amen. Amen. People have value. People have value outside of uh, which town you were born in. Just out of curiosity, who was born in the Midwest? Who was born outside of the U.S.? Awesome. Who was born uh, in Texas? Oh, two. <laughs> Pacific Northwest. Yes. East. Just the whole East Coast. Beautiful. Any other place I missed? Oh. Southwest, Arizona, California? Yeah? Okay, you're not born in California or Arizona. No. <laughs> but we're all of value. It doesn't matter where we were born. Who likes to read books? Who would rather watch a movie? And we love each other. We love each other. It is one of those things that I, I, I want to get to the scripture. Um, but before I do, so there's this uh, TV show called The Office. Anyone familiar with The Office? Okay. All right, so they try to do diversity training. They try to recognize each other's differences. And uh, Michael Scott is the boss, and he, he says, there's blue collar and there's white collar, and, and I'm collar blind. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. It, it's crazy. We don't need to make each other's differences invisible, right? I don't need to ignore the fact that uh, some of you are Yankees fans, okay? Um, it's okay. It's okay for you to like the Yankees. I still love you anyways, right? We can recognize each other's differences, and we can still love each other. We don't have to ignore our differences. So our scripture today. So it's coming from Paul. For in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. And I was hoping, let's see, I have the whole thing here somewhere. I have the whole thing. I don't have the whole thing here. Nope. If you go back to Galatians and you look, he's talking about the value that people were given because of their obedience to the law. So he was talking about law and he was talking about faith. And he wasn't, and, and he, you know, during different Gospels, if you go back to Jesus, Jesus even said, you know, obey the law, but I have come to fulfill, right? I have come to fulfill all prophecy and all the religious laws. People can find value in one another differently. So Paul is kind of restating this to the Galatians and saying, listen, there's no female or male because were males and females treated similarly in that time? No, females were property, males were property owners, okay? And he was saying, we need to change our idea that society has been bringing to us and value everyone, because, even with their differences. We don't have to, you know, he says there's no boy or girl, right? There's no male or female. It's not that all of a sudden genders didn't exist. Differences still existed, but it was those values that we attributed to each of them that they're trying to change. Paul is trying to change. Jesus is trying to change. Now, you all are saying, why, yes, Pastor Misty, we understand. Like, this is not a new thing. We've been going through this for a long time. In fact, I have probably preached on it several times. And I've only been here since September. You know, one year. Oh, yeah, I've been here for one year. Woo! <laughs> one year today. Um, 
And so you're like, yes, Pastor Misty, we understand. Tell us something new. Okay. I want to tell you something new. How many of you have been a manager? How many of you have been in charge of hiring and firing? How many of you have had to value a person because of what they could do for you? Yes. We are living in a society, and I'm not saying that's wrong. When you work, when you have an employer, you need to find, I mean, right now we're trying to find the best pianist to meet our needs, right? We can't just accept everyone and be like, oh yeah, you know, it, it's not about valuing someone in those particular instances, but we are caught in this society where that comes out of the business, outside of the church, into our daily lives, and we start valuing people for what they can do for us instead of just who they are. Have you talked to your neighbors and not really befriended them because they, you know, don't share the common interests that you have? Do you value them more or less because of that? Are they Yankees fans? <laughs> I'm, just kidding. I'm just kidding. You know Arizona and Yankees, right? We have that thing going on. Okay, I'm not. I'm. I'm just being silly there. We take these ideas of competition, of value, outside of the places where we we work and outside of the places where we are making sure we're putting the best people in place, right? And we take them into our lives. And now someone isn't valuable unless they can either do something for you. Uh, and it's really what culture is saying is better, right? We value people because someone else says that um, garbage people should be valued less than a blue collar worker. We've heard that, right? We know how much our garbage people get paid, right? We actually really value them. What would happen? Right? So the problem is, is that we are always doing this and we need to be aware of those times when something from society or something has been taken out of context or out of place and affects our love for another person. This is not an easy thing. And it's even harder to see where we need to confess our wrongs, right? We don't like doing that. Um, and we all, you know, we're all, we're all perfect people. We don't have anything to grow. We've, we've worked on this already. We've, we've been there. Okay. I know I have, and I'm definitely not a perfect person. I still judge all the time. But God is calling us today to look at that because of our Bible passage today, of recognizing that we all have differences, and it's okay to have differences, and we can value one another through that. So I hope that you will read through the social principles, um, that you will read through scripture. You'll join us next week for the nurturing community as we look at how we care for one another. All right, we're going to be looking at families. We're going to be looking at those systems of hospitality. We're going to be looking at all of that. And I hope that you will just take the time this week to really dig deep into your life and where you're allowing someone else to make value judgments for you on who you should love, who you should care for, who you should value. Let's pray. God, thank you for accepting us. Thank you for accepting us in, even though we're not perfect. Thank you for valuing us even though we fail all the time. We fail to connect with our neighbors. We fail to love them as we should. We fail to love you as we should. God, thank you for accepting us and loving us and working on us continually, even when we don't deserve to have your attention or your work done with us. God, help us to see in this society where we're building walls every day, those figurative walls that are keeping us from loving one another, help us to break those down and love one another just because we are your children, oh God us to love our enemies, oh God, those people that, you know, we would have every reason to hate. Help us to value them as a person. God, do that deep work in us today. And God, we also, we lift up all those prayers of our hearts that you might hear and receive them, that you might bring us peace, or challenge us to deal with them. Deal with those thoughts and feelings and emotions. Help us today, oh God. Because you are wonderful and you are great.
and you never, ever leave us. We pray all of this in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. In the spirit of diversity and um, of enjoying one another, we come together to the table, this beautiful communion table. And it's not New Song's table. It's not my table. It's not the person's table who bought it, right? Um, this table is actually God's table. And God invites all to the table who want to come and be in relationship with God. God invites us to make amends with our neighbors. If you haven't said hi to your neighbor yet, you just want to just real quick, just say hi. Hi. All right, that's enough. You guys can get to know each other after the service. <laughs> but we're invited to the table. Uh, when we come to the table, it doesn't matter if you're a regular attender here, if you're a visitor, um, if you claim to be United Methodist or uh, your ELCA or anything, you are still invited to the table. We invite you forward whether you are under 10 years old or over. This is the table to which you are invited. And so we will remember that night together that Jesus came with his disciples and they sat and they were sharing in the Passover meal together. And Jesus started actually to do something a little bit different. And we're going to share in some of the liturgy that will help us remember that time together. We call it the Great Thanksgiving. And so I begin, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus the Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us all from the slavery of sin and death, and you made with us a new covenant by water and by the Spirit. And God, on the night in which you gave on which he gave himself up for us, he actually sat at the table and he broke the bread after he gave thanks to you. Thanks to you. And he said, take and eat this. This is my body given for you. Whenever you eat it, remember me. And after the supper was over and after they had eaten, he took the cup and he gave thanks to you, O oh God. And he gave it to his disciples and he said, drink from this, all of you. This is the cup that contains the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it. Remember me. And so, O oh God, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves. We offer ourselves. We offer ourselves as a holy and a living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. O oh God, pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered here, on these gifts of bread and juice, and make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray together that prayer that Jesus taught us to pray as we come together to remember this special meal. We say together, our Father, who is in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom 
and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I'm going to invite our communion stewards to come help, and I'm going to pass, help pass some of those things out to you all. If you are unable to come forward during this time, I invite you to stay seated and just let an usher know and we'll bring communion to you.
We have a prayer that we like to say at the conclusion of our communion service. It's on page 11 in our United Methodist hymnal, if you've got one there. I'm not sure if it was on the end of our screen today. If you don't have a hymnal or you want to just listen, you can be in an attitude of prayer as we give our thanks to God. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn today is actually a song. Um, it says, uh, you made us in your image. Uh, we're going to have the words on the screen, and it's to the melody of the church's one foundation. So it should be familiar for a lot of you who have you know, that tune kind of in your head. You'll catch on pretty quickly. It's a nice melody. And uh, let us stand as we sing that hymn together. here think of one thing you're really good at something that you could claim that you are better than one other person all right just think for a second think for a second all right I'm gonna call on a couple people Irie drawing all right Anne oh compassion we got compassion over there Jeff being nice Jeff Librarianship. All right. How about Odin? Football. All right. Who wants to just share? Yes. Music. Someone over here. Shout it out. A good shopper. I love it. Beautiful. And you are all valued. You are good at something, but you're valued because God loves you. 
So go now and value others and find out what other people are good at. I was gonna ask, is anyone here good at finances? I'll, re I'll recruit you uh, for, oh, okay, all right, all right. Go now from this place into the world, knowing that you are loved and valued, that you are different, that you're better at some things than others, but the same value to God. Go now to share that message with all you meet. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you.